Hello AP Chemistry and welcome to more redox stuff. Okay, so in the last one we just talked about how to assign oxidation states and now we're going to talk about um, points of reference. Okay, there aren't a lot of things that you have to like memorize in terms of like oxidation reduction reactions, right? But here are two points of reference that you really should know. Okay, permanganate ion, what is that? MnO4 minus 1, right? If we were going to assign oxidation states, oxygen has one of negative 2, right? Total of negative 8, which means that manganese must be plus 7, right? Because there's a negative 1 here. Now, plus 7 is the maximum oxidation state for manganese, okay? Plus 7 is the maximum oxidation state for manganese. What that means is that manganese cannot be oxidized beyond that, right? So if we think of it like a spectrum, right? So here's manganese, right? And over here we have um, dot, 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 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And there's plus 7. This is the maximum oxidation. There is no moving beyond this, right? That is the end of the line, plus 7. Okay, which means it can be plus one, two, three, four, five, six, and then seven is it. Which means that in the permanganate ion, right, permanganate ion, manganese is readily reduced. Because it's in its maximum oxidation state, okay? In the permanganate ion, manganese is readily reduced because manganese is in its maximum oxidation state. Okay, what that means is when we have permanganate ion present in a chemical reaction, right, one of those things that we should always be thinking about is that, ooh, this manganese likely to be reduced, right? And then we can sort of interpret the rest of the reaction from that point of view, right? Meaning that if manganese is going to be reduced, something else must be, ding, 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 oxidized, because they happen, have to happen together, right? If manganese is going to be reduced, which basically means gaining electrons, like reduction is a gain in electrons, then somebody else has to be giving those electrons away and itself being oxidized, right? So let's consider the sulfite ion, which looks like this, right? Negative 2, negative 6 means sulfur is, right, plus 4, okay? So sulfite ion, right? coincidentally, is something where the sulfur is readily oxidized. So the sulfur is readily oxidized. Now, that means if we think about sulfur, right, and we think about a spectrum, one, two, three, four, right, if we are here, sulfur actually prefers to be over here, okay? which means that sulfur is readily oxidized, meaning sulfur will readily lose electrons, right? Manganese will readily gain electrons, and that's how these reactions are going to occur, okay? Um, quick note, um, can manganese become over here, like negative 1 or negative 3? Is that an option? No, not at all, never ever, right? Metals, elemental metals will never be reduced. I reiterate, Elemental metals can never be reduced because an elemental metal has an oxidation state of zero. And if we were to reduce something that's zero, meaning its new oxidation state would be negative, and that's not an option for metals, okay? Um, so none of that would be applicable here. So anyway, sulfur would rather be more oxidized, right? So these are just points of reference where, and if something is in its max oxidation state, it must be reduced. If something is not at its max oxidation state, it's likely to be oxidized, okay? Um, your textbook gives it to you, um, but just in case you didn't pay attention, right? There are little mnemonics that people memorize to help you remember if something, what oxidation reduction means, right? Oxidation is a loss of electrons. Reduction is a gain of electrons, right? There's also the... This one, uh, loss of electrons is oxidation, gain of electrons is reduction. Um, I just feel like that's more work to memorize. I just memorize that oxidation means gets more positive and reduction means gets more negative, right? Reducing, less, getting less. That's how it works in my head. Anyway, let's look at this. 
a redox reaction, right? We have our reactants, right? In order to know that it's a redox reaction, this, huge, right? We have to assign oxidation states. If I ask you, is this a redox reaction, and you say yes or no, the end, it's wrong, right? You have to tell me why, right? And the why is because I assigned oxidation states, and I can tell that my manganese is oxidized, and my chlorine, not my chlorine, my hydrogen is reduced, right? And again, has to happen as a pair. Going back to types of reactions up here, right, we know that this is going to produce hydrogen, and we see that that hydrogen selectively comes from the, the actual place, right, where my two reactants are mixing, right, and slowly but surely this is happening, which is why, actually, if we took it out before it was done reacting and we looked closely at it with a um, really, really good magnifying glass, you would actually be able to see pitting, right, or the the um, deformation of the flat surface, right, where it's reacting with the surface and taking off some of, all, some of the um, atoms, right, but not all of them, right, and you'd be able to see that on the surface of the um, substance. And if we were going to depict this at the particulate level, right, we would have our H2 gas, where my hydrogens would be stuck together floating around, right, above the fray for the most part. We would have our Mg solid hanging out in here, and we'd also have a plethora of ions, right, from the magnesium, from the chloride, right, all hanging out together. Okay, so are these redox reactions? I don't know, let us see, right? Hydrochloric acid decomposes to form this, right? Chlorine's oxygen, well, let's do this one, see, this is obviously this. Okay, now let's go ahead and assign some oxidation states. So. HCl, this is negative 1, this is plus 1, this is, right, this is, therefore we could say that hydrogen is, what, reduced, yes, hydrogen is reduced because it became more negative, right, chlorine, on the other hand, is oxidized, Chlorine is oxidized becomes, because it becomes more positive, right? Which is why it doesn't have to actually become positive, nor does it have to become negative. It becomes more positive or it becomes more negative, okay? Okay, so this oxidation state is zero because it's an element. This is, hydrogen is generally plus one, which makes this plus four, which means that carbon must be negative four, right? We go over here, this is negative two, which makes plus four. And this is negative 2 plus 1, yes? Well, as in like this is negative 2, so this is plus 2, there's plus 1. Okay, so if we take a look at this, we can see, right, that oxygen goes from 0 to negative 2, so we could say that oxygen is reduced, and we could say that carbon is oxidized, yes? Making this, overall, a redox reaction. And in general, when, um, when we have elemental things in either side, usually that's a big clue that we have a redox happening, right? Because elemental things are zero, right? And those are the only things that are zero. So, you know, that's usually a big clue that what we're looking at is a redox process. All right, very good. Here, activity series of the metals. We didn't talk about this last year. Um, it was in your guys' textbook. I think we just omitted it. But here, what this says is, right, that these are most readily oxidized these are less likely to be oxidized, okay? And hydrogen's in here as a standard because we can take hydrogen, elemental hydrogen, and oxidize it to H+, right? It behaves like a metal. And so if we look here, this is the easiest oxidation, this is the hardest oxidation, which should make sense because if we take a metal and we oxidize it, what does it always turn into? Ions, right? Solid metals become oxidized to their ions, which means that they are then soluble right, meaning that they form ionic compounds that can then dissolve, right, and turn into ions, which then makes sense that none of these are readily oxidized because these are the things that, one, make up the piping in our houses, make up our jewelry between silver and platinum, which means that we don't want them to be readily oxidized, right? Going back to our lab with our silver alloy, that's why we had to use a very uh, highly concentrated nitric acid in order to get them to become oxidized, right? Which is what we did, right? We took solids and we oxidized them, right? And our nitric, the nitrate was then reduced, right? And the hydrogen also over the course of our reaction, okay? And we'll see up here that the things that are most readily oxidized should make total sense because where do we find lithium and potassium? 
ding, 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 group one, right? The most readily oxidized part, the most reactive elements in our periodic table come from that area, right, from group one. And so it makes sense that those are readily oxidized, right? We never find this in nature. We find this all the time, right? This is not a natural state. We never find that because they are so readily oxidized. Yeah, makes sense? Okay, thank you for listening to this little um, extended note on redox and its processes. And um, be good. Stay tuned for the next one. See you guys later. Bye.